But um, yeah. in the sixth step, I just I need to continue to to uh, uh, recognize and admit uh, that I'm not ready to let go of this and to pray because I'd have some concept of God. And of course, as a Christian, the concept is Jesus Christ. And as to tell Jesus, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing, uh, or I'm willing to be willing, or I'm willing to be willing, uh, please uh, you know, <laughs> make me willing, right? Well, hello, and welcome back to Deep in Christ. I'm your host, John Mark Grodi, here at the Coming Home Network International, sharing with you another conversation about this, our daily task of growing in imitation of and relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thanks again for joining us for this discussion. I'm I'm joined by my good friend and mentor and colleague, Brother Rex Norris, good here morning. at the Coming Home Network. Thank you, brother. And we're continuing along with this discussion on the 12-step spirituality, the 12 steps of recovery, uh, which have turned out, again, like I kind of had a glimpse of this going in from our conversations, Brother Rex, but man, I can't say it enough times. What a what a wonderful um, distillation of the gospel path uh, for Christians or for so, new Christians, baby Christians, potential Christians. What a great way to draw close to our Lord Jesus Christ, to really enter into the gospel. And like those people in the gospel, the lepers, the lame people, the blind people, the sin sinners who are getting ready to get stoned yeah. with with rocks with rocks um, <laughs> like them what a what a distilled way for us to draw close to Christ and ask for his healing and go yeah. through these steps of inviting him into greater healing into our lives i've just been blown away by the study brother rex so yeah i was listening i was reading this morning a, a, a reflection on luke uh, where it says jesus ate with sinners and how that scandalized people right it's like yeah well jesus like sort of that's just like that's why God came, was just to kind of hang out with us and to transform us, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember if I, if I uh, mentioned this last week on our, on our program, but I, I, it occurred to me some point the last week, and I've just been like chuckling to myself since then, that it's so funny in the gospel, so ironic wherever it makes a distinction between like these people and the sinners, right? Yes. He ate with sinners um, instead of... Who exactly? As if there aren't <laughs> sinners, you know. I came to save. I came not for the righteous, but for sinners. And of course, there's right. some people who are saying, "Oh, good. I'm not part of that group you came to save." Right, right. Which of course is silly. That's the whole point. There are the sinners, and then there's those who know that they're sinners. Yeah. Exactly. 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 Oh boy. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it just kind of turns things upside down, right? I mean, just that's. Some people say that, that uh, Jesus came and tur turned the world upside down, and I think maybe Jesus came and turned the world right side up. Right side up. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Very good, brother. Well, again, today we're starting into step six, and again, just a brief recap of where we've been. Uh, steps four and five were these steps of making a searching and fearless moral inventory. That was step four. And then step five was... Um, to God and to self and to another person to bring these out into the light, to, to tell them to a brother, you know, a close uh, a close friend who can can hear this out and, and love you through it, as well as, you know, as, as Catholics, to bring it to a priest and to experience the great grace of the sacrament of confession. We talked about that uh, and some of the, the dynamics there. And so now uh, to tell us, brother, what step six is and give us a, a little introduction to to it, if you would. Right. So, uh, simply because I've I've made a list of all the uh, uh, of all my uh, character defects as I know them, and simply because I've told another person doesn't necessarily mean that uh, I'm ready uh, for, for anything. I mean, I've just I've just I've just admitted it, which is a huge step. Mm -hmm. uh, but so yeah. this the the next step, the sixth step, is uh, we were uh, 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 we were no, entirely we? ready. Yeah, we we're entirely yeah. ready. Uh, to ask God to remove these defects, right? And yeah. uh, I mean that it seems almost uh, that would be self-evident, but not necessarily. I mean, I there are there are character defects that, that many of us, at least I, uh, speaking for only for myself, uh, it was kind of scary to think about letting letting them go, and I had yeah. to, I had to struggle. Am I entirely ready uh, to uh, have God remove these defects of character? 
It remind me of the story in John, John 5, I think, chapter 5, where uh, Jesus sees the man who uh, is crippled uh, at the, well, at the uh, pool of Bethsaida. Uh, he's been mm-hmm. crippled for like over 30 years, I think, something like that. And Jesus says, are you ready to be healed? Curious, right. huh? Are you, are you ready to be healed? <laughs> and I think Jesus in the sixth step, Jesus asks me or whoever is engaged in the sixth step, are, are you ready to be healed? Now you, you've admitted that you need healing. Are you ready? Uh, and right. some of us more or less uh, are ready. So that's, that's the sixth yeah. step. Um, yeah. There's such interesting stages and, and layers that the 12 steps sort of bring out. I mean, there's, in some sense, the, they, the 12 steps have you begin with that place of particular weakness, particular woundedness in your life. And to make that this great, turn that into a good by making it the starting place of a new radical honesty with God, a new radical surrender, you know, in light of recognizing your powerlessness. That was kind of the beginning there. But now there's this turn to say, hey, that was just a starting place. Um, you know, what would it be like to really be ready for all of this stuff, for all of this junk to be turned out into the light and to ask God to receive healing. That'll be step seven where there's this, there's this new asking. But this step is a pause. And actually one of the resources I was reading uh, focused on that aspect that there's kind of been a lot of activity up to this point, especially the last couple steps. Now there's almost a pause to mm-hmm. consider and to let the, that germinate, let those seeds grow and consider, yeah, am I, am I really ready for God to... Mm-hmm. To do, to go even further, to grow virtue mm-hmm. in me, to really get rid of the, you know, the, the vices in me, mm-hmm. and if I'm not ready, we don't want to turn back to any sort of dishonesty with ourselves and God. We don't want to pretend we're ready if we're not ready. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to acknowledge even our unreadiness. Like mm-hmm. if we look into ourselves and recognize, well, there's part of me, yeah, that still really likes the idea of inviting further healing, inviting God really to remove these these character defects and flaws and sins and sinful ways of thinking and, and feeling and believing. And there's a part of me that wants that, but there's a part of me that doesn't mm-hmm. still. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. good to acknowledge that and to, to think on that and Absolutely. pray about that. Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, the catechism talks about, or the church in general talks about concupiscence, right? I mean, that this, yeah. that there's this desire. And on the other hand, there's this t- tending towards towards you know going back to the flesh pots of Egypt as it were uh, or uh, for instance if my if, if one of my major character defects is I, I need to control people places and things because that's just the way I feel safe uh, it, 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 it there was a purpose for it initially perhaps in my younger life but I've realized now through doing these steps that that it's not serving me or the gospel uh, or other people well by me trying to control everything but I haven't left right. enough space for grace because of my desire to control. Now, I may recognize that. At the same time, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm willing to let go of that because that's kind of a that's a scary thing, right? right. That's that can be scary to think. Well, what's going to happen if I let go? Now, again, on one level, uh, I've got some concept of God, and I, I I believe that God's going to take care of me. On the other hand. There's this, there's this tug, right? Uh, so right. I'm not necessarily entirely ready at that moment. Uh, yeah. And so it, it can be an ongoing thing, and we take two steps. As anything in the spiritual life, I, I may take two steps forward and one step back. But yeah. the purpose, you know, I got I keep going. At the beginning of the 12 steps, it's interesting, right? Because, we, again, we, as I said before, we start with a place of real weakness and in some sense, it's easier there to lean into that desire, to that, to that recognition of my weakness and that desire for healing, because it's it's an area of particular powerlessness. Mm-hmm. In, in that sense, it's a it's a gift of grace for us to experience that and recognize that, because that really allows us to to flee to God in a new way. But at this juncture, we get to a, this this interesting this subtler place of the, the interplay of our disordered concupiscent desires and our desire for God. And we, we experience this sort of chicken and the egg thing that you see in the gospel, right? Like when the man says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. You know, or I, I, yeah, I want God to remove these defects and desires, but also I don't want, you know, mm-hmm. the I, mm-hmm. the me, the, the heart mm-hmm. is divided. Mm-hmm. And, and so like, 
there's a bit of a dilemma. There's a subtle dilemma here. It's like, I, yes, I want to be healed. I want all that God wants to give me, but also I don't. And what do I do about that, Brother Rex, when I recognize that the I, the heart is divided? What do I do? Yes. Well, I think uh, I, I'll go back to something you said just a few minutes ago, and that is um, uh, acknowledging that that's in, in fact the reality. That to, to, to name it for what it is when I see it in my life. I mean, there's one thing, you know, I can't, once I know, I can't not know mm -hmm. again because I know, right? I mean, I've, I've written it down. I've, I've told you, I've told whoever uh, about this character defect, and I can't not know that the character defect is there. And <clears throat> one of the things that helped me, has helped me, uh, is that to acknowledge it when I see it, uh, and in fact, that comes that comes even later. I mean, they, they talk about this specifically in the in the tenth step, but um, yeah. in the sixth step, I just I need to continue to to uh, uh, recognize and admit uh, that I'm not ready to let go of this and to pray because I have some concept of God, and of course, as a Christian, the concept is Jesus Christ, and is to tell Jesus uh, I'm 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 willing. Uh, or I'm willing to be willing, or I'm willing to be willing. Uh, please, uh, you know, <laughs> make me willing, right? Uh, yeah, because that yeah. become that be, that's a grace in itself, right? That willingness. Right. I think this this <clears throat> this place in the twelve steps really gets at this this connection. We might say so on this show before, brother Peter, no, Father Peter, Father Peter, and I uh, did a lot of study on the theological and the cardinal virtues. Um, we did a long study through Joseph Pieper's book on the cardinal virtues. You can you can check that out in the archives. But one thing we talked a lot about was this interplay between again between grace and free will, between the theological virtues, which are gifts from God, and the human or cardinal virtues and all their sub-virtues that are then the actions we take based on that grace, in the context of that grace. And again, I, I feel like this juncture, this step, uh, is it sort of involves wrestling with this transition, this this juncture between those two places, because we can recognize the cardinal virtues, you know, the, the human perfections, these things we should emulate in Christ and the saints, these habits we should build, these bad habits we should break. But if we discover in ourselves a lack of will for that, a lack of desire for that, well, then we're kind of stuck, right? It's like, hmm. I see what I should do, but only part of me wants to do it. Part mm -hmm. of the me, the deepest me wants to do that. And so the only remedy is then to double back and rely more on the theological virtues, saying, Lord, I need greater faith and trust in you. I need greater hope, which means a desire for you and for the things that you want to give me. A greater charity, that is a, a greater love of you, because that's the only thing that can give me the desire that can conquer the, 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 the part of my heart that still doesn't desire you. And, and I can't do that. I need the divine surgeon, the divine physician to give me a heart transplant mm -hmm. so that I can actually desire as I ought to be healed in these ways. It sort of reminds me of uh, the idea that, that if, I'm, if I'm struggling with a particular step, that I can go back to the step before it or the step before yeah. it. As it before it, okay. and 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 maybe recommit myself. So if I've already mm -hmm. forgotten, which is quite possible in some people's case, in my case, if I've already forgotten that I've given my will and my life over to the care of God, I can sort of I can backtrack and realize, right. oh wait a minute, wait a minute, I have a relationship. I'm working on my relationship with God, and uh, yeah. so that God God will, uh, uh, if I'm when I'm entirely ready, and ask Him that God will. Uh, give me the grace to, uh, to to be willing, right? Pray mm -hmm. to be willing, to be willing, right? Yeah. Uh, and so I can always go back, and you know, I, I have to remember that my my life now is not rooted in in my destructive behaviors. My life now is rooted in God. And by the way, I wanted to say something. Uh, you've mm -hmm. you've said this a couple times, and it reminds me this notion that I I, I began the the twelve step work because there was something really destructive in my life, whether it was alcohol or uh, control problems or eating or whatever it was. But then there were other things that have manifest themselves because of working these steps. And what it, what it re, what it reminds me of is that the fall. Nothing in the fall was left unwounded. 
the way I think is wounded, the way I see the world is wounded, my sexuality is wounded, everything is wounded. And it's taking a good look at that and realizing, so the presenting issue, if you will, was alcohol, pornography, eating, whatever, uh, gambling. That was the presenting issue. But now that I've, I've admitted that and I began to take a deeper look into myself, I realized there are other things that are also uh, wounded that were sort of hidden uh, underneath this. In fact, I may have been gambling initially uh, so that I so that I could I, I was in pain and when I found out when I did this, I'm not in pain anymore. Well now I'm not doing that anymore, so now I'm in pain and I have to take a look <laughs> right. and see well, what's this what is this other, what is this pain about? Right? Right. Where are the other ways in which I'm uh, I'm wounded? I'm hmm. sinful broken use whatever terminology works for you uh and then uh, uh uh yeah and then i can again i come back to the sixth step and now i'm i'm uh entirely ready to have god remove these things uh these character defects uh which are standing in my way of uh living in good relationship with myself right. with uh god and the, with the world around me yeah, that's such a again. This is such a great point here, brother, about the, the presenting issue, but then all the the underlying issues that then begin to bubble up. We begin to see them more clearly. But again, also the the idea of going back to a previous step. It's really interesting. I, so I have a good friend, uh, Andrew Reinhardt. He's a he works here in the Diocese of Toledo, and he has a, a show uh, elsewhere on the internet uh, called Physically Spiritual. And he did a long series talking about kind of the three pillars of the spiritual life. And he talked about prayer, the sacramental life, and then the life of virtue or, you know, um, asceticism, basically the ways that we actually then actively train ourselves. But it's interesting looking here at the, these, the center point of the 12 steps here, we have kind of the steps of, of confession or reconciliation. That was steps four and five, where we examine our conscience and we confess, we bring it out into the open. But even once you've done that, then of course, well, you recognize, well, uh, but I need to desire God more. So there's the there's the the relationship of prayer it has to be this rock solid continual element of my spiritual life. And I'm going to make more mistakes, so I'm going to have to double back and confess those mistakes again. That still happens. But all along, I have to keep uh, building that relationship with God because it's only through the relationship with Jesus that I'm going to desire God enough. I'm going to have enough. I'm going to have the desire to change, which is what this step is talking about. Mm -hmm. And so the steps after this get more, after seven, they get more into the active. Like I'm going to go out, I'm going to make amends, I'm going to apologize to people, I'm going to, I'm going to do different things. But it's like this middle place is the, is the part of our spiritual life where we keep recycling because I'm going to make mistakes, I have to confess them, but then I return just to, you know, entering into and building that relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. And I think another important component of the 12 steps in general is that I'm not doing this by myself. I'm doing it in the context of community. And so yes. even while I've, I've done my fifth step, uh, I may not be entirely ready uh, yeah. to ask God to remove these defects of character. Nevertheless, I'm attending 12 step meetings or some sort of group uh, group where I hear other men and women who have or still are struggling with the same kind of thing. And so there's a power uh, that, you know, wherever two or more are gathered, you know, God is in their midst. And there's a power there that God is able to work. Through. You may say something that helps me uh, move from step six to become entirely ready. You know, you just, mm -hmm. God may use you without you ever knowing it, you know. Right. Uh, God may use me. And uh, so I think it's important to keep that. I'm not on my own in this. I'm mm -hmm. in a community with other people who are who are wounded just like me, who are sinners just like me, uh, and yeah. Jesus has promised uh, that He's going to come and eat with us, uh, even if we're not particularly. We don't even maybe we don't even realize that at some level we're we're still wounded or we're sinners. Jesus mm -hmm. is there uh, with us. Yeah, great, great point, brother. The community is such an important part of all this. Um, let's talk about prayer a bit more here. Again, we've established that an important, like, well, not just an important, but a bedrock aspect of this step for, particularly for the Christian, for the Catholic, is prayer. That we recognize if 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 we're lacking in desire, well, there's only one thing for that: it's to continue to go deeper in this relationship with the Lord. And as we, 
as we said in the previous episode, quoting from the Catechism, prayer is the relationship mm-hmm. with God. Mm-hmm. So if I don't have prayer, I don't have a relationship, and I'm not mm-hmm. growing in that relationship. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about prayer, um, and let's let's put this in more in the Catholic context. Again, here at the Coming Home Network, we have people who are thinking about becoming Catholic. That's maybe that's their context for why they're involved here. Either they're new Catholics or they're thinking about the Catholic Church. And wherever they might be in this process in their own life, um, what sort of, when we talk about prayer, again, sometimes people are like, well, great, prayer. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know, what, what what sort of prayer? What do I actually do? Mm-hmm. So in particular, like, what, what are the kinds of, what do we want to say about prayer here? Um, what, what encouragement can we give to the person who recognizes, oh, I need more of a relationship with Christ, but how do I begin praying? What sort of prayer are we talking about here? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, the first thing that pops into my mind is that the admission of that in itself, if we admit that to God, we've begun to pray, right? That, you know, I have no idea how to pray. That in itself becomes prayer. Right? Yeah. Dear God, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. That's a prayer. Right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, and in the in the Catholic tradition, right, we have uh, we have a, a, a enormous uh, array of prayer prayer devotions. You know, the Liturgy of the Hours, which is a, a daily prayer uh, resource that people around the world are praying. I don't have to come up uh, if I'm struggling. I don't have to come up with words myself. I can rely yeah. upon the words of Christ and upon the words of the Church uh, to pray. And uh, yeah. you know. Uh, you know, some people on their journey to the church are more comfortable with some resources than they are others, or some some uh, devotions. They, some people like the rosary. Some people are concerned about it. Fair enough. Some people are concerned about the liturgy of the hours. Fair enough. Some people like reading scripture and using that as a way into prayer, into a conversation with God. Go for it. You know, there's mm-hmm. uh, the only, I think in this con- in this case. The only wrong way to pray is not to, right? Right. Uh, and even then, if I say, "God, I, I have no," I just I, I'm not going to pray because I I don't know how. Well, I've just said a prayer. Yeah. One thing that comes to my mind in all this is that um, we talked on a previous episode about kind, types of prayer and and really all the types or forms of prayer. What they're oriented towards, what they're leading us towards, is the prayer of relationship, the prayer of contemplation the prayer of simply being in the presence of God where yes. we talk less or maybe not at all and we just receive from God. We're just there with God. That's what it's proceeding towards. But there are, and so, and that's what we want here. Like if we're thinking about this issue of a desire uh, to be fully ready for God to to remove our defects, if we are talking about the kind of prayer that's going to bring about that desire, this deep relationship, sometimes we want that, but on a given day, we just can't, make sense of it. We just can't do it. Like we sit there and we just don't, there, there's no, there's no sensible presence of God. There's no, we have no consolation. We're just feeling frantic and scattered. And what I would say about that is that that's where the other types of prayer that maybe some of our audience are less familiar with, some of the more catholic type prayers like the Liturgy of the Hours or the Rosary, these are helps. catholic is that a word? Is catholic I just, a word? Catholic. Catholic, icky, icky. They sound Catholic-y. a little icky. To Catholic, so that's, okay. That's, Catholic, that's kind of that's the a issue. good word. <laughs> but the whole point of those is to be this place where we start, especially during those times when we're feeling dry, when we're not feeling close to the Lord. Again, there's a lack of feeling there, and faith isn't about feelings per se. Um, we have to continue to pray when we're just not feeling it, um, and so it's good to have. Uh, those kinds of, it's good to have the liturgy of the hours that on a day when I'm just, I don't know what to say to God. I'm just kind of feeling empty, but I know I got to continue to deepen in this relationship. Well, I can sit there and I can read the Psalm and I can think about it a bit. And I can say, Lord, I'm, <laughs> I'm barely awake this morning and I'm not feeling good, but here I am. I've shown up. I read the Psalm. Here are some things I think about it and I'm going to go on and I'm going to, you know, we, we have these aids in prayer that can tide us over, that can, that can, work on us even when we're not feeling it mm-hmm. uh, so that God can bring us into a deeper a deeper mm-hmm. relationship. And I think it's imp- particularly important to pray the Liturgy of the Hours or pray however however we choose to pray, uh, especially when we don't feel like it. That's, that's, a, yep. that's when God does some great, great work. It's all a matter of cleansing the spiritual lens, right? I mean, I'm reading mm-hmm. the, I'm trying to engage in the Psalms. I'm trying to engage in a prayerful reading of the New Testament. I'm not feeling anything. 
but my desire to please God does in fact please God. And so my desire to pray is a prayer. And so I'm right. doing my, and God is doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I can read right. the gospel. I can meditate on it. Uh, and God will do for, God, God will do for me uh, the work that needs to be done. And that really, yeah. again, it's, uh, I'm, I'm back to step three, right? I uh, came mm -hmm. to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, the very act of engaging in prayer is itself, yeah. uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, efficacious. Yeah. And we persevere in that. As you said, it's most important for us to persevere in that, especially when we're not feeling it, because it'll come. You know, there will be a time when we're more ready. There will, if we persevere, God does show up and he will show up. He will, he will um, bring us that relationship we desire with him. Go if ahead, you think ahead. about the, the spiritual journey um, in its totality, uh, the Israel, Israel was in the desert for 40 years, 40 mm -hmm. years of dryness, uh, and, and they stumbled. And they fell, and yet God was always faithful. Uh, and they did eventually enter the promised land. You and I, if we are willing to walk through the desert, knowing from the start that there may be times, that there will be times uh, when we fall and long for the flesh pots of Egypt, as the scripture says, uh, God will see us through to the promised land. And it's having that faith. To be able to pray, even when the only prayer that I can I can utter is help, help God uh, mm -hmm. to trust that because I've done that, God has uh, uh, made up the distance between my inability to pray and God's willingness to answer prayer. It's like the prodigal right. son; while he was still a long way off, the father saw him and came running. Yeah. So while I'm still a long way off in my prayer life, right? I'm, I'm doing, I'm maybe I'm not even doing the best I can, but I'm in the, I'm going in the general direction. God will see me, a long way off, and come running. Yeah, that's, that's good news. Yes, good news indeed. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, you know, we want, uh, we want that desire to be here in our heart. You know, but in the meantime, some days it just, it's just in our head, and we have the great gift of the scriptures, of, of the liturgy of the hours, where we pray through the Psalms um, to ask God, if only intellectually, if only dryly, uh, the best we can today, we ask uh, for that desire. I just, I'll, I think I'll leave us here with just one of my favorite little bits of the Psalms. This comes up frequently in the liturgy of the hours. Um, it's a bit of Psalm 57, and it goes, My heart is ready, O God. My heart is ready. I will sing, I will sing your praise. Awake, my soul. Awake, lyre and harp. I will awake the dawn. And I Beautiful. don't know why, but I've always been struck mm. by that. Even days when I don't feel ready, that either, even the, the desire to be able to say that with the psalmist, my yes. heart is ready, oh God. My heart is ready. That's beautiful. If I can add just one more thing, John Mark, and that is Please this do. notion, again, I want to go back to the, the idea of community. And mm -hmm. to know that when I'm not in the, when I'm, when I'm struggling in my prayer life, <clears throat> yeah. to know that there are other men and women out there praying for me is a great, is a great gift, a great strength, a great inspiration uh, for me. Because there are days that when I'm in a good space praying, I'm, I feel connected, spiritually connected. Uh, I have a sense of God's presence in my life. I can know that there are people in the world uh, people who are struggling just like me, who who are not experiencing that conscious contact with God, as the 12-step sure. programs would say. And to know that I'm carrying them when, they, when they're when they unable, for any variety of reasons, not to carry on. Uh, and that you and I do this uh, for one another. It's not yeah. just me and Jesus. It's me and Jesus in community with other other people. And that's one of the beauties mm -hmm. of, the, of uh, not only the Christian message, but I think the Catholic message, that we're all in this together. Yeah. Well, actually, now you made me think of another thing I want to add, too. 
So earlier, I talked. You know, we mentioned the sort of the dynamic between the sacramental life and the prayer life. You know, we're gonna we're gonna keep making mistakes. So we return and we confess our sins, and then we we go back and we continue to persevere in, in prayer. Well, also again, thinking of this, of the particular Catholic context of this, for us is that we also have this great gift of uh, communion. We have the Eucharist. We have this very uh, uh, this prime. Uh, source and summit, this pinnacle of intimacy with the Lord that he's given us, this opportunity to draw to, into communion with him and with uh, with our brothers and sisters in the faith through the sacrament of, of the Eucharist. And so that would be a, a thing here too. Again, we don't always feel it. Even we who believe intellectually assent to what the church teaches about the Eucharist being the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are days when it, that you can believe that, but it doesn't, you don't feel it. It's not doesn't sort of affect your heart the way it perhaps ought to. But we know it's efficacious. We know that God has given us this opportunity to draw close to him. We can draw close with our minds and bodies even when our heart is not feeling ready. Uh, and so that's a great opportunity too for we as Catholics or those you know who are preparing to be Catholic. We have this great gift in the Eucharist to be fed on our Lord Jesus Christ, to, to receive this gift from him. Um, this sacramental way we can draw close to him and draw into relationship with him. And so that's obviously, for the Catholic, it's this great gift that we would suggest that our Lord is inviting everyone to. And that's part Amen. of the reason the Coming Home Network is here. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Well, we'll leave it there. Again, thank you, brother, for this conversation. I, I enjoy our conversation so much. And I hope that you uh, enjoyed this conversation. Brother Rex and I had, again, we're working through the 12 steps here. We're on step six. Next week, we'll go on to step seven where we, well, we're never going to be fully ready, but hopefully we're more ready. And so in that readiness, we really do ask God for a new healing that than we've experienced before. And so we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, in the meantime, again, the Coming Home Network is this network of people who, network of Christians primarily, who, who came from all sorts of backgrounds, but have come to embrace the Catholic Church. And whether you're a new convert or you're someone who's getting ready to enter the church or you're just thinking about it, asking questions, hey, this is your network. So go to www.chnetwork.org. We've got a newsletter for you, articles, videos, all kinds of great resources, including an online community where you can, as you work these steps, as you investigate the Catholic Church, as you persevere in prayer and in your faith, you can find a community of people who are doing the same thing and we'll be praying for you and loving on you as you as you go through that journey. So check that out at community.chnetwork.org. And once again, this is Deep in Christ. We'll be with you again next week. God bless. Mm-hmm.